Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Warner to say why I do service, jbstechvalley.com. And here, as you can see yourself, columnist for the Jewish Press. Right, I'm having fun with all three assignments, Rabbi, and my column in the Jewish Press is called Albany Beat, and I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may yeah. be. And uh, with us today, though, is uh, s someone that I can't write about because <laughs> it, it's more visual and sound, audio and visual. Uh, Steve Van Zant is a comedian and impressionist. Yes. And uh, a longtime Maybe. friend. Yes. And Known each other a long time. Please, welcome to the Jewish View. Maybe well, I thank you both for having me. Impression a government official. Uh, we'll That's say, right. Do yeah. we have government officials on? Yeah, I, you could do like a real generic one, you know, it's like New York State government, but I don't want to go down that road. Did, did you ever do a Shelly Silver one? No, never did. Uh, uh, no, because that like, gave away my handcuffs. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I never really focused a lot on uh, local politicians, per se, yeah, only because in my travels, yeah. if I go outside of the immediate the state, right, right. Pe people have no idea who Sheldon you, Silver was. Because you do uh, impression or... Famous, on, uh, super famous, nationally famous people. On cruise ships. Exactly. You know, so. you know I might be in a, on a cruise ship someplace across the world, and if I do Shelly Silver... They're all going to look at me and say, I, I paid for this? What, what is this? You know. So, uh, no, I, that, that never worked out. Uh, but, so, uh, but, so who do, who are your favorites besides De Niro? Which is, well, you know, people tell me I look a little bit like De Niro. I don't know, maybe. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> bit, huh? Yo, yo. Of course, Meet the Parents comes to mind, you yeah. know. But, um, you're talking to me? You're talking to me. <laughs> yeah. huh? And, of course, his son-in-law in the, in the movies is, is uh, Jewish. And so we, we got that whole angle going That's on. Right. But we could actually do a whole skit right here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, De Niro is one that people tell me I look like a lot, you know, because I got the Italian features, you know, I'm a little... No one told you you look like the Steve Van Zandt from Bruce no, Springsteen's and I, band. I get know, that so. one all the time. And I got great stories about that, of course, having that name. I was born with that name, yes. and he was not. So, uh, in fact, I met him, and he told me this story. Uh, what happened was his mother remarried right and he took his father's surname and he was adopted as steve van zandt but that doesn't stop people from sending me requests for fan mail from all over the world really? thinking i'm him wow you know do you answer them uh no i just tell them i don't know how you got through my website and didn't and you missed the word comedian about ten thousand times my yeah. pictures all over the place my resume and somehow they get right to that email and uh -huh. they email me through there thinking I'm the singer, so I... And I do you forward it to him? Did you get no, his contact info? But no, how I ended up meeting him was um, he... Uh, I had a radio show here in Albany a few years back, and I thought it was time to kind of get him on the air and talk to him about the confusion, because he was aware of me and I was aware oh. of him, but we've never actually met. But it's kind of funny, going back to uh, the mid-'80s, I'm in bed one day and I get a call... <laughs> And it was a friend of mine who lives in Manhattan goes, when did you start playing guitar with Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> and I had no idea who this musician was with Bruce, and who's now more famous now because of The Sopranos, of course. Yes. He's an actor as yeah. well as a musician. But back then, I, had no, I wasn't a Springsteen fan. I had no idea who he was. And I said, what are you talking about? They said, pick up the, the New York Times. There's a picture of you, a big picture of you on the entertainment section with Pat Benatar and Diz Dizzy Gillespie and Miles Davis and all these very famous yeah. musicians. They had done an album together uh -huh. to fight apartheid, to bring awareness to apartheid. And they somehow pulled my photograph out really? and ran it with his story, and it went on a wire service ah. all over the country. And that's when I first became aware of who this guy Did was. Did you get the New York Times? Uh, I had the, I had the clipping, it? and he, <laughs> he even has a copy of it now. So. <laughs> so well, when the Times gets it wrong, the gray lady gets exactly. it wrong. Exactly. You know, what are you going to do? But it's, I always look at it this way. My name could be Bob Hope, you know, the guy, another comedian. That yeah. would be probably a bigger curse than having a musician's name. <laughs> right, right. But I told him, you need to change your name back because I was born with that name. That's right. <laughs> you know, we're on the Jewish view, so we love the Borscht Belt. I hear it. skills. Yes, I did so all that stuff. About, uh, oh, absolutely. Some stories about the Borscht Well, we were just talking a little bit before yeah. we started yeah. about how I was kind of on the, uh, the, the end cusp of the... Uh, the, 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 the vibrancy of exactly. the Exactly. And of course, I don't have to tell you guys how big that was. That was, a, that was where you were coming up into your fame, uh, the Borscht Belt. And, that, and then when, <laughs> by the time I got to it, it was where you were kind of coming down, I unfortunately. I feel bad about that always. Yeah. I always loved going Oh, it was great. You know, and, and I met a lot of, uh, had, uh, actually, when I started uh, performing there, again, on the, on the weaning mm -hmm. uh, end of the, the Borscht Belt, I bet people like Pat Cooper who were still performing there. Right. Some of the big name comedians were still performing in that area. And there was uh, one guy who was perpetually at all of these. His name is Mal Z. Lawrence. 
Malzi Lawrence. Lawrence. No, it doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> Never rang a bell with no, you? No, no, no. Was a, a comedian? Uh, comedian, and I just... <laughs> didn't, it doesn't ring a bell, oh. but, uh, you know, there, there were some, still some pretty big names that were still doing it then. But by the time I got around to doing the, the cat skills, there were very well, few of them were so left. Who, so yeah, who, besides Pat Cooper, who else did you remember? Oh, people? God. Uh, Henny Youngman. Really? Henny right. Youngman. Yep. I worked with Henny Youngman a couple of times. Mm. And he was in his eight, early 80s yeah, and right. still performing. You and know? you were in your 20s. I wish I brought some pictures. I well, have that's all, right. all kinds that's of great right. pictures of stuff. That Next, I time. Next time. We'll have you back. Absolutely. Okay. Next time. Uh, uh, I'll be watching uh, you. <laughs> but uh, no, I met a lot of those great. A lot of them were great. And a lot of them, uh, you know, were miserable. But that's the way show business is. Some are really nice. Some are not a very approachable. But, um, you know, it depends. Did you ever do an impression in front of the person, the live person? No, I've never gotten to work with somebody I actually mimic, you know. Oh. And that's, that, I would have loved to, I'm a big Sylvester Stallone fan, you know, I'd love to come up to go, hey, you know, I really love all your movies, you know, I just want to tell you, you're the best, you know, absolutely, you know. But, uh, no, I never got a, a chance to meet a lot of the, uh, the performers I've uh, mimicked. Because, do you watch Saturday Night Live? Like Love when, Saturday Night Live, sure. Like when Kate McKinnon does an impression of Hillary Clinton, Hillary right. Clinton comes out. Comes in, they were sitting at the bar the there. And they're sitting on, yeah, they're and sitting. she's doing Hillary in front of Hillary. Right, and right. Just like, <laughs> yeah, and she doesn't really, of course, you know, she's kind of got the voice closed, but she does. she's obviously a lot younger. Yeah. Right. And so there's a little bit of a clash the there. The wig. The wig. Yeah, but, you know, again, when you're, when you're doing a show like Saturday Night Live, you've got to change in and out of this stuff literally yeah, in minutes. Right. And so they try to do the but best But you also want can. to get the essence. Essence. Because that's the key. That's the key. Because in the, right. in the first three or four or five years of SNL, uh, you know, you didn't get into costume. You just that's did right. the impression without the costume. Exactly. Like so, a Chevy Chase doing uh, Gerald Ford, Gerald for Ford, right. right. He just right. tripped. And he and wasn't even trying to mimic the voice, per se. He no. was trying to just do an essence of him. Right. You know? but, and uh, so they, never, they do a great job considering all they have to, how they have to flip that over very quickly. You know? Big money. Oh, absolutely. It's big money. Very big. Yeah, very so, big. Huh? So, but, so uh, how long does it take for you to, you know, like you say, hey, there's a celebrity I'm going to mimic. You know, it's funny. I'm going, you know, how long does it take for you to work on it? I'm, I, you're your I, natural. Tell us well, about how I, I, you got yeah. into it. That'd be well, interesting. That, sure, absolutely. I started. I always. I found at a very early age. I had a knack for mimicry. You know, and, and I think a lot of kids do, because when we're we're very very young, we're we're observers, and we're and sound is very important when you're a child. You know, <clears throat> the sound of your mother's voice, sound of mm -hmm. your father's voice, and I I just had a knack uh, at an early age, even before I can remember. My mom said you had a knack for mimicking the TV. Superman and TV shows and stuff like that, the Andy Griffith show growing oh, yeah. up. And, and I just had a knack for it. And I can remember my mother, who was 100% uh, Italian, being on the phone with her mother, speaking in Italian, and I would start mimicking, even at five, six years old, the Italian words, I didn't even know what they were, but I would just mimic her, you know? And then I would just show off her relatives and just start doing my impression of my mom on the oh, phone. Oh, you were a and, loving child. Oh, my, or the middle child, guys, you know, come on. Yeah. Yeah. The middle out. child, you get no attention. <laughs> I don't have to tell you, you know, I'm one of nine children, yeah, a well. middle child. Nobody paid it any attention. Well, to Rabbi me. Simon can uh, relate to relate that. to that. There you go. Because okay. he's got thirteen kids. Holy cow! <laughs> Who kept score in the family? Holy <laughs> God! It's crazy. Imagine but, he's uh, all the grandkids now. Oh like, my God! Yeah, can't yeah. remember their names. Like, <laughs> oh my God! He's got to be a scorekeeper when you get up to those there numbers. You go. <laughs> but then it just kind of evolved. I mean, uh, as I got into high school, it's the classic, uh, you know, class clown mimicking the teachers. Right. I actually uh, went on the PA system one time as a gag. I, I talked my way into doing uh, the principal's voice on the. On the, on the sound system, you know, I got in a little trouble for that. But uh, I worked at a Burger King. It was one of my first jobs, and I would practice my impressions on the mic. Back in the days when you used to order <laughs> the, the food mic, yeah. on the mic into the kitchen. That's right. <laughs> and and uh, I used to even mimic my boss. Uh, I used to mimic his voice into the kitchen. And one time he was back there. I didn't know it. <laughs> he wasn't too happy. But then I would do impressions, you know, uh, of uh, in different voices. And then it just kind of evolved. And then about a year after high school. So what high school did you go to? I went to Columbia High School right in East in Greenbush, East Greenbush right across okay. the river from here. And, uh, Blue Devils, right? That's right. Very good. You are good. You are gift. You are a gift. <laughs> but uh, then, about a year after high school, back in the uh, mid to late seventies, the Gong Show was the big yeah, thing. Remember, right? With Chuck Barris, and I auditioned for that TV show. And how I did that was not too far from here, up on Central Avenue. There was a, a nightclub. It was kind of like the karaoke of its time. Mm -hmm. They would do Gong shows. They would have little talent shows. And it was a, was that JB Scott? It was actually I think it's a strip joint now. But oh, to Carlos. To Carlos. Oh, that okay. used to be called September's years yes. ago. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. And they did a gong show. It was fifty dollars first prize. I won that. I thought that was the end of it. Great, fifty bucks. I'm nineteen years old. Okay. It's a million dollars. 
And the guy called me back. He goes, you know, that we packed them in. He goes, that thing yeah. was such a hit. You were such a hit. He goes, I'm going to do it every week for 12 weeks. We'll take the 12 winners, and whoever wins that one, I'll fly them out to L.A. to see if they can get on the national gong show. So, long story short, I, I, enter, I get back into the competition. I win that. They fly me out to L.A. I get on the show. I get a perfect 30-point score. Yeah. I meet Chuck Barris. So uh -huh. I'm like, wow, maybe I'm a big, big star. You know? So I came back here, and I started getting some club work and right. locally, and then it led into New York City. I started doing some of the comedy clubs down in New York and a couple out in L.A. And, you know, and then like a dummy, I got married really young. You know, <laughs> That kind of slowed things to a screeching halt for a while. And then I started getting into voiceover work. Somebody heard my show and said, hey, you know, you'd be great at doing uh, some uh, animation and some maybe some voiceover. Did you start mimicking your wife when she said no? Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You don't mess with the wife's voice. No. But uh, no. But uh, I started uh, just kind of taking work wherever I could get it. You have any and kids? I have uh, two children. They're two 18 years apart. My son is uh, 30. He'll be 37 in January. My daughter just turned uh, 19. Oh. So it's kind of crazy. I know. I don't know. <laughs> well, I get two reactions. She's double, she's d double the age, right? Pretty 19, much. 38. It's yeah. funny. You get and I, you could probably relate to this, Rabbi. You get two <laughs> reactions when you tell people the age of your children. If you start with the one that's really young, right, or the really older one, like the 37 year old, they say, "Wow, you look way too youthful to have a 37 year old son," which is very nice. But if I say I have a 19 year old daughter, they go, "Well, what's it?" Old fart like you, don't know, <laughs> nineteen year old daughter, daughter, you know. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, um, and they they're, they're completely opposite. I mean, they, both of them have no sense of humor whatsoever. Well, they're a generation <laughs> apart. They're a generation apart. That's true. So they do come from a different uh, exactly. perspective. You know, exactly, so. exactly. But um, well, my mother is my mother's the youngest of five, right. and she's seventeen years younger than her wow, older that's, sister. That's so. a big, that was a big thing, so I understand that. Yeah, and I married a woman uh, who is also one of eight, and she's the youngest, and there's 20 years between her and her oldest brother. Right, so, so she I think, understands yeah, Absolutely, that, yeah. and I think that's why we're drawn to each other. We both relate to the big families, and, you know, she's Irish, and, uh -huh. and I'm Dutch, Italian, and, and Indian, so it's a real <laughs> mix, mix of crazy combinations there. You know. So after high school, yeah, after high school, I oh, uh, then you did the, the, the gong September's, show. The gong I did show. The gong did show. you do you have a tape or do you have a you know it's any interesting recording of that? Videotape was just starting to come right around out that time, and of course back then I I left it up to five or six people to videotape it for me, of which none of them did. You know the technology was really low. I mean, but it I wasn't the, live. You no, know, it wasn't live, but so nobody taped come, it. But like, you could come home and tape it. When well, you, I didn't have a VCR in a TV station. Uh, foolishly, I didn't. I should have reached out to the local TV station. Yeah. I think it was at that time it was Channel Six right. to tape it, and yeah. I never did that because back then they had it on those big carts. Right. They may still have it. Cause yeah, I've tried. Safe. You know, I've tried. I've tried NBC. I've tried. Uh, but Channel Six, what did they say? They they have nothing. They have, they don't have. And any Chuck Barris passed away recently, uh, didn't he? Didn't, no, no, no. No, he's still alive. So. No, no. Then Chuck contact Bar him. He may have. I know it. Do you hey, remember hey, Chuck, date you remember you, me? I was one of ten thousand contestants on your show. You know, the, but the thing is that, you yeah. know, Ed McMahon with his uh, Star Search. Star Search. Well, he, you know, they still pull out clips right. of the Big current stars right. and where we they were out when they that. started like out. Rosie O'Donnell. So they example. still have those Star Search. Yeah, well, what I was hoping was. So you, you might still be able to contact I'm, Chuck Barris because that looking. was his production. I, I, need to, I need to do that. But I, I also uh, <laughs> came up dry in my attempts. But. But unlike a lot of shows, for some reason, the Gong Show never put out the box set. You know, these TV right. shows yeah, in the yeah. 70s, 80s. Sure, sure. You can buy the box sets now for some. I guess they were so embarrassed after looking at that show. They said, I don't know if we want to invest in uh, box sets of the Gong. Because there were some crazy acts there. There were, yeah. You know? yeah. And in fact, the lady that came on just before me, she got so nervous, she literally ran off the stage before she even started. I had to come out and follow that, you know. Oh, yeah. But I was 19 years old. I was sure. in a borrowed suit uh -huh. that didn't fit me. And a buddy of mine who was like 6'2", <laughs> you'd think it would fit me. I'm 6'5". No. Yeah, right. If you, you know, people that saw it said, well, you know, I was distracted by your really short shirt. <laughs> but I never saw it. I'd love to see it because I'd love to show my kids. Yeah, exactly. I'd say, you know, this is, I was 19. Oh, there, 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 are, there are ways to get it. Yeah, I got to so, dig it out. I got to dig okay. it out. Absolutely. Well, do you remember the date that you actually... Yes, the air date was like May 19th, 1978. It hurts just to even say that. But, so you were uh, born in 1960? I was born in 1958. 58. 
Okay. Yeah, so this was just before my 20th birthday. Uh -huh. You know, so four or five months before my 20th yeah. birthday. So yeah. what other uh, gigs did you ever pull? Well, after after I did the gong show, I started doing the places you'd expect the comedian to work, and that would be in like in New York City at the, all the, the improv and the Catch Carolines. Rise and Star Carolines, the comic strip, right. all those places. I saw Eddie Murphy when he was just basically starting out in a club. Jerry uh, Seinfeld? Uh, Jerry maybe? Seinfeld. Yeah. Bill Schecht, who was, uh, became a... Uh, um, didn't become famous comedian himself, but he was the main writer for David Letterman for his entire run. Right. Uh, guys like that, that that I knew and worked with. Now here's a great, really great story. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm digging out an old, I had a comedy club in Lake George from 94 right. to 99, and I was just getting remarried, and I said, I don't want to travel in the summer. That, those, at that time I was doing a lot of traveling. And I decided to open a comedy club in Lake George just for the summer months, yeah. you know? and. Um, I uh, had every comedian, when you open up a room like that, every comedian on the planet comes out of the woodwork looking for work, up and coming guys. And there was a young guy, up and coming guy, who was going to school at uh, a college in town called St. Rose at the time. Uh -huh. Oh, Jimmy Fallon. Right? Jimmy yeah, Fallon. Okay. And I didn't, I didn't realize that I had turned him down until decades later. I'm in my basement and I got an old file cabinet with some headshots and some PCR tapes. And I'm cleaning it out and there's a headshot of Jimmy Fallon stapled to a resume with like two credits on it, you know, and a headshot and a v VHS tape. If only. And, and Jimmy Fallon auditioned for that room in Lake George, but I don't remember putting him on stage because I would have remembered. Mm -hmm. And because I had so many guys that I used professionals and I didn't want to use some amateur that was just starting out because he's probably about 19, 20 himself, you know. So I turned him down. Well, how'd that work out? For yeah. <laughs> but, and he does a lot of impressions. Not, maybe so part of me didn't maybe, want him to do that. Maybe he doesn't remember that, and you could still get I on the Tonight Show. Yeah, and actually, I know a guy who was in college with him, who are, who's still tight with him, and sees him. And I said, I need to get this to you so you can get it to him. You know. Oh, I can, you, know? you could get it to him. Absolutely. Yeah, you know? and, and, local and in fact, the Sienna guys are doing a commercial right now to get it on there. Oh, is that right? So, yeah, they're doing yeah. some yeah, sort of Yeah, he's still got a good local connection to the oh, capital absolutely, region. Absolutely, yeah. sure. Absolutely. So, so we can help you with that. Oh, I appreciate that. You're, you're still yeah. trying to book me. The business of being a comedian, you yeah. know, I talked to one once, yeah. and um, he just says, keep your day job. That was his... Yeah, uh, you know, look, you know, um, the thing is, it's not like, you know, the old adage you hear, you're either starving or you're famous. That's not necessarily true. There's a lot of working regional comics that make a very good living regionally, you know. And, uh, and the key to me, for me, is diversif diversification. Mm -hmm. I do corporate events. I do the clubs. I do the resorts. I've done the cruise ships. But I do private events. And uh, also, I do a lot of voiceover work. I have a home studio. Right, you know, I have my voiceover work has been heard all over the world, and you know, wouldn't know it, but I've never been to Dubai, for example. But my voice has been there a number of times. You know, I have clients that I do voiceover stuff for, character voices and commercials, things like that, and uh, you know, animation, things like that. But uh, the guys that you know that are living out of their car, you know, they're 19, 20 years old. That's great, but you know, you're right, you can't do that forever either. And it is nice to have something to fall back on, yeah. you know. So what would you have fallen back on? What, would, what did you major well, that's, in, you know, in college? Well, or? I was, you know, artistic. You know, I thought I'd be in some kind of a visual arts, maybe a graphic artist or something uh -huh. like that. Um, I always had an interest in doing that kind of thing. But my own, my own daughter is kind of in that situation now. She's an unbelievably uh, excellent visual artist, yeah. you know. And she wants to get into theater and stuff like that. I said, still, you know, rather than work your way up through there, get that degree. And then you're yeah. on an even playing field with everybody else that wants to do that. Because sometimes talent alone is not going to do it for you, you know. And even Jimmy Fallon dropped out of... Uh, St. Rose, yeah. He dropped out of St. Rose and they went back and gave him the honorary degree, you know. <laughs> had, had he not been as famous, I don't think that honorary degree exactly. would have been coming. You know, exactly. So it's always good to stick... And then he had to work for it. He had to give the commencement speech. Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> it exactly. wasn't like, you know, they just gave it to him. <laughs> exactly. But, but, but diversification, you know, I, I tell a lot of these guys, you know, they say, how do I start? Well, I say, you know, don't eliminate the firehouses and places. That's a good place to get your feet wet. You yeah. know, do the do the firehouse, do the garden club, yeah. whatever it is. Get your get your feet wet, and you know, because there's always going to be venues. So, how do you, you do an impression of a rhododendron? Uh, <laughs> very carefully. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> you know who he was doing? Oh. Uh, Christopher, Roy, Lloyd, Christopher Lloyd, Back to the Future, Taxi. Uh, yeah, the him. actor Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I can transform right into him. Look, body. <laughs> but, um, you know, so the, uh, the, the key is, you know, and then the other thing is uh, I tell guys is, um, 
keep the stuff fairly clean because yeah. you'll work more. I, it's funny, I get these guys all the time. Hey, can I come and work for you? Because I book talent as well. Sometimes I'll put together a corporate event. There's a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. I need like five comedians for a two hour fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they'll, they'll say, can you put that together? And I have a very difficult time finding guys that can work super, super clean. Yeah. Because, you know, that, that might work in, uh, you know, for the funny bone in uh, a in comedy the, club at 2 right. o'clock in well, the morning. comedy works, yeah. Right, and that, that, that's great. But if you want to uh, do a corporate event where yeah. everything is so politically correct, you got to be really careful. And it's a very difficult to find these guys that really? work on that. Really yeah, that's stuff. dodgy, the corporate events. I mean, some Not of them, necessarily. It some depends. of them could be... Yeah, but you got to understand what your... The audience is going to be a very diversified audience, religiously... Yeah. Politically, right. intellectually, right. socially, and you know, they don't want to hear the F word, and they don't yeah. want to hear not only that, they don't, you know, maybe uh, it's funny because a lot of comics like to do political humor, and that's great if you're famous, but if you're not, you're eliminating half your audience right now, <laughs> you know. So, if you're pro Trump well, or you're pro Hillary and you're up there ranting on one or the do other, both. unless you do like both, like Jimmy Fallon does, right? Both, that's you know, true, that's and that's what he does, and that's, and that's exactly why they and picked I think him. Johnny Carson started that. Ah, uh, this is true, I, I do believe I did that. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's true. But uh, so, you know, I know a story with Jackie Mason, who I like. As a yeah, who's a very, very conservative guy, actually. Yeah, he actually, and but he, he started stays. making fun of President Obama. Right. And he said, you know, the Jewish people who come are right. liberals, and they didn't appreciate it. He that's right. He said he cut it out. He's right. Exactly what you're saying, because the, the, he felt he's conservative. Exactly. But if his audience is liberal, they don't want to hear him yeah, making and, those and, kind of jokes. And it's, it doesn't them. mean, in, in Rabbi, it doesn't mean you can't have your own political point of view. And it doesn't mean you can't say it in there, but it's, it's how you say it. For example, I think the trend now is because the country is so divided. Yeah. Even if you take comedy, uh, you had um, this, oh God, this female comedian that was just doing a show just literally days after the election a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And she went, she was very upset by yeah. the outcome. She's a big Hillary supporter. And, she, and you know, people are paying anywhere from $35 to $200 to see her. Mm -hmm. And hard, you know, and liberals and the conservatives alike don't want to be preached to when they're going. Mm. They want to, they want to come and see you. They want to put you back in that box when yeah, they're done, and yeah. they want to go home. She went off on this tangent, right. anti-Trump thing, and literally, even the, the the people that supported her were like, "Enough already! You know, we're not here to be, you know, talked down to, or not, we we just went through all of that. Sure, this is escapism for us. That's Let's right. not relive this all over again." And she, instead of kind of getting the, the vibe from the audience, she started dropping the F-bomb going, well, F you and F you and right, F you. Sure. And she started insulting. So it was already, she opened up a wound and then she threw salt in it by, you know, basically chewing them all out for actually disagreeing with her point mm. of view. And, that, and that's really not what people want either. And, the, uh, and it wasn't Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> no, it wasn't Rosie O'Donnell, who might have a case for that. That's right. <laughs> but it was uh, Rhonda Sy Sykes. Rhonda? Oh, Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and, she re and I saw the clip. You can actually... But she's salty anyway. Very salty. Yeah. But she really went off the yeah. deep end. Okay. And, and, and it's funny. A lot of musicians do the same thing. Like Bruce Springsteen. They tend to go, they, they do they go up there and you, you tend to get a, a speech out of these so, guys. So, yeah. so let me just ask yeah. you about the... Um, and maybe you could just give round numbers. Sure. How much does it cost to book you on, or book someone on a cruise ship or for a corporate event? Well, it's all going to be relative. You know, I'm not going to get as much as Jimmy Fallon if he was doing a comedy cruise. I'm not, but on the other hand, you know, a, a professional like myself is going to be dramatically more money than some guy who's working at uh, Walmart during the day and he's a comedian on, on Friday and Saturday night at the local comedy club. <laughs> so it's all relative. Now, as far as the cruise... Do you thing, get $10,000? Do you get $50,000? It, it, it depends. Do you it, get 5000 Do they it, drop you off by a helicopter, <laughs> fly you down, it land depends. you on well, the boat? You, well, you I use mean, the cruise, the, the cruise as, a, as a question. Depends on the cruise line. Depends on the agent you're having. Some your, your agent is a negotiator. Right. He's, a, he's a guy that's selling you. Sure. The more money you you, you make, the more he money makes he makes. Because it's a percentage. Exactly. Right. So I, some agents are better than others. I you know so I I don't have one guy that does all my, I'm, no? my real famous people have one guy. Yeah, okay. Okay. Guys at my level have might work with 15 different guys. Wow. And uh, whatever one, you know, oh, I got this date available. Yeah. This is what it pays, and that's up to me whether to say, well, I don't lock in that date. Or do I want to wait for something better to come along? I see. And, and, and the other good uh, side of that is that it keeps my calendar more full if I'm working with a lot of different people. So you're not going to give me a price? A, a <laughs> well, the most money I ever made for one job, yeah. that, that's what your question is? Good, I'll take that. It was $25,000. Okay. Okay. Now, 
there are there's comedians out there that probably make a quarter of a million a show. Sure, no, no, you know? I understand. So, yeah. so obviously, you know, if if if, if there's some nineteen year old, as I said, he works at Walmart. No, no but you're he's not going to get twenty five thousand. He he's lucky if he gets fifteen hundred. He might, he's lucky if he gets twenty five dollars. You know. Okay. <laughs> Because <laughs> and, and do you go on the boat when they dock, and then you do your show, and then you leave, or are you on the cruise for a week? It, it, well, it depends on the ship. See, sometimes you get, and this is a and look, a cruise uh, industry, a cruise line is a business as well. Yeah. So what they used to do is they'd fly you onto a ship. Yeah. And then they'd fly you off for that ship, and then they'd fly you on, uh, some other person out. But then they realized, wait a minute, we could save a lot of money. I just vision, like, I envision you <laughs> fl climbing down the ladder and then jumping onto the boat. I have actually it, done as that. As it hovers. It's <laughs> funny you should bring that up. One time I was, I had a, I had to fly in a cr onto a cruise ship that was already in route on its cruise. It was like halfway through the cruise. Yeah. I wasn't on at the beginning of the cruise. A comedian was coming <laughs> off. I was going on. This particular port that I was getting on the <laughs> ship, they couldn't literally come into the port. It was too shallow. So what they do is they have the boat docked offshore, a mm -hmm. couple hundred you know, feet or yards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, the only, so I had to take a little dinghy out to the boat. Oh. And they literally threw a ladder over the oh, side. side. And you had they, to climb they said, the well, throw your luggage up first. And I'm throwing it up there, right? And I had to climb the ladder. And of course, there's people lined up and they're sure. watching that. They probably think I'm some guy that works, <laughs> you know, on the crew. And then what is it? Two, three nights later, I'm the headliner at the comedy <laughs> club. And I'm like, of course, I, I made a whole routine. What a way it, to you know. make an entrance. Yeah, you know? So, oh, absolutely. They probably thought you were a refugee trying to escape Cuba or something. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but Joan Rivers, who uh, towards the end of her career, um, continue to do cruise ships and a lot of big big names don't do them because it's just not lucrative enough for them but whatever the, the reason they she was doing them and uh they would fly her in by helicopter yeah they, she'd do the show the show would be over they'd put her in that helicopter and take her back off mm -hmm. again but uh and I, th these cruise ships are not uh, oh, they're, floating they're floating like noah's ark i mean they're like they're they're, they're, <laughs> flo they're they're like floating cities some yeah. of them you know yeah yeah but uh, you know, and then the thing is about cruising. If you're if if you uh, you're chosen to do those, you can make a living just doing cruises your whole career. But you do pay a big price for that because, because you're well because you're literally tied up with the cruises, and then suddenly your contract ends, and then maybe you've been doing cruising for three or four years, yeah. and then suddenly you have nothing in your calendar because you've been living on cruises, yeah. and you're out of out of sight, out of mind. You know, uh, maybe so. It's not for everybody. It's not for family people. It's uh, it's not you know. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. And I thought he was. Is that three fingers you're putting up? Okay, good. All right. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I meet a lot of people on cruises that are entertainers, and, and they've been on. They're on three marriages, or they have no children, sure. and they work together. You know, as a family, as a husband and wife team. And so you meet all kinds like, of like like Edie and Steve, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Steve and Edie Gourmet. Oh my God! Now you're really dating me. No, um, I think you and I are just on the cusp of uh, Steve and Edie, <laughs> but uh, Frank's old friends. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's not for everybody. I got I got kind of tired of it. I did a lot of them. Okay. You know, five weeks in Alaska sounds exciting until you've been in Alaska for five, five weeks. weeks. <laughs> you know, it's one like, one night I spent a week in West Virginia. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know. It's kind of like that. <laughs> but uh, you know, there's worse ways to make a living than than being out in the middle of the sea and making people laugh. And, mm. Hey, you know the other thing is you bomb, where are you going to go, right? You're in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> and if you bomb, Overboard. where are you going to go? You know, there's no place to hide. So you try to, you try to have a good show. You know? <laughs> so, so what's next for you? What's on your uh, Well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm actually, my calendar is, <clears throat> I'm trying to focus more on the private events and I'm doing some motivational comedy now and things like that and the voiceover stuff. I really enjoy being able to be in my pajamas. Yeah, I go in, I have a script for uh -huh. a client. I go in, I record it. I'm also launching a site very soon. It'll be, uh, I'm creating, um, well, the best way to describe it is animated videos, customized animated videos. Anime, yeah. Yeah, uh, basically I can take a caricature of a famous celebrity, for example, like Robert, Robert De Niro, uh, President Obama, yeah. uh, Ross Perot, uh -huh. uh, Ross Perot. Uh, yeah, well, maybe. Well, I don't know why Ross Perot came out. Well, Donald Trump is what I okay. meant to say. And uh, and uh, you can actually take a caricature of them. I can animate it within this software that I that uh, this person does for me, and I can do the re the voiceover. Yeah. And I can say anything, and it'll make that picture move right. with any message. Right. Now the, the, the applications are birthdays, anniversaries, corporate events. Right. Some people have uh, PowerPoint presentations, and they can have Barack Obama or Donald Trump mm -hmm. introduce their mm -hmm. their speaker, roast somebody, and this can all be done. It's not new. 
It's not new, but it's 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 it's, it's more commercial, maybe. It's more commercial. But it was it's industrial, easier, and it's it's easier to make time. them now. I mean, the yeah. technology is there now. The, the, Thank the, you, Walt Disney. Yeah, <laughs> and it's cheaper to do them. I can knock those out very very quickly now. Okay. And uh, I've sold them for big corporate events, Fortune 500. Well, companies. you got to get your money back from the program. Absolutely. Oh, the actually, the program is very inexpensive. So I'm, I'm I'm also creating a uh, a site where you can have your baby baby's uh, first birthday, for example. Yeah. I can animate the baby in an unbelievably realistic way to speak and invite people to its own first birthday oh, party or wonderful. whatever the <laughs> special occasion is. And your pet. I have, I've done literally hundreds of uh, greetings where I take a picture of a dog, a yeah, cat, yeah. even a pig. I can animate Don't it. This is a Jewish show. Hey. <laughs> what are you saying pig for? <laughs> A live, pig, a live pig, not a live pig. Doesn't pig, matter. Not an eaten pig. Doesn't matter. But, uh, <laughs> um, but you can animate the pet and actually make a Christmas greeting. A, uh, oh, well, a Hanukkah greeting. Well, a show. <laughs> you go again. A Hanukkah greeting. <laughs> yeah, 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 I yeah, love yeah. that I know this guy because I could tease oh, him. Oh, yo, yo, yo. You be watching. <laughs> but but, but the technology is there now. You can make these things. And... Um, <laughs> And, so uh, you could spin a dreidel, and you can make the dreidel talk. There you go, absolutely. Okay. I can remember. I even had a client. Uh, I do a lot of car dealership stuff. Yes. Uh, for new. You for always new, have. Yes, and uh, all over the country. And uh, the guy goes, "Hey, can you make? I have a used car lot, yeah. and I'm in Virginia. I have 500 cars. Can you right. make the cars sell themselves? Yeah. So I can take a photo of the car looking head on. Yeah. And make the grill That's actually true. come to life, give it eyes, and the car tells you about all the features. And I can do it in a funny voice. If it's a sports car, you give mm -hmm. it a, a British accent. If it's a, maybe an Italian-made yeah. car, could, you know, sound like De Niro, whatever. No, you know? no, no, no. I mean, there's a lot of creativity you can Lloyd do. Christopher Lloyd would be perfect for Absolutely. Back to the Future. It's a DeLorean. I use DeLorean. <laughs> you know, so uh, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. And, I, and again, getting back to what I said before, it's diversification. If you get, you can do all this cool stuff, and you can make a living. You know. Yeah. So. Well, a lot of, there's been a lot of talking cars. You know, That's so. true. Not quite as good as Mary, but... No, you know, not as good. Not Nowhere near as good as, as you. as good as you. So, let's, we had a good time. Yes, so we had a good time. Can you yeah. do wedding invitations where you... Absolutely. He's ready to hire you. He's yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we'll talk off camera. We'll talk. I'll tell you what I can do. We'll talk. Okay. All right, very good. Listen, the impersonator, I don't know, we need a Jewish character, but in any case... You, did, man, you said Jackie Mason. I do a little yeah. bit. Not, not a great Jackie oh, Mason. Okay. I haven't done him in years, but he's one of my funny guys. Talks okay. like this. I can never understand what the hell he's saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but what? Jackie Mason. But I love I love those old guys. You know, yeah, they're, yeah. they're great. Listen, and they love you yeah. back. I do. I and do. we love you over here. We hopefully you get you. You won't yes, too much over here. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much for being on it. And it's only good things with always a lot of success. Good you see, absolutely. you're six five. You could stretch. I am absolutely. Okay. Have <laughs> continued success to you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it very much, Mark.